traditional and rich social cultural history of both Sri Lanka and of its diaspora. Now we assembled more than 50 scholars globally to contribute to this encyclopedia and this is a volume that is made up of both contextual as well as country-based features that serve to illustrate the varied dimensions of the diasporic experience. The book celebrates the achievements that the Sri Lankan community has made internationally in a variety of fields, including medicine, science, academia, law, public administration, as well as in areas such as literature, culture, arts, cuisine, sports, and popular culture, among others. The Honourable Minister has mentioned some very prominent Sri Lankan diaspora members living overseas. The major part of the book consists of 21 country region profiles and covers the formation and development of Sri Lankan diaspora communities in Asia, Australasia, Europe, and North America. The encyclopedia is available online. It can be purchased online at Amazon.com, so do visit. And of the diaspora, which is very powerful. They have links with the people living in Sri Lanka also. I'm just, I'm wondering what Professor Pieris thinks the next step forward would be. What is the future trajectory that he sees? Uh, what is the realistic trajectory? What is the best case trajectory? Because obviously it would be better if we can all work together. And I would also like to know from the Foreign Minister of Singapore what his own thoughts are and what Singapore can do. You have taken a lot of interest in, in producing this encyclopedia. We appreciate that. Uh, what role can Singapore play to bring about reconciliation and healing in Sri Lanka? Well, it is certainly a, a wish to work cordially with the diaspora. Uh, we don't wish to marginalize them or to have a confrontational relationship with them. I think the first thing to note is the diaspora is no longer a monolith. Uh, it consists of very different points of view. There are different nuances and gradations. And as I said, there is a segment of it that uh, wishes to work purposefully in this country, not for political reasons, but these are business people who also have a concern about uh, the well-being of the people of the North. Uh, at the same time, we must not forget that at the other end of the spectrum, there is a section of the diaspora that has not given up the dream of being a red space And uh, they are thinking of ways and means of reviving them. Uh, that is part of the regret of the reality of the situation. Now, the initiative that you referred to uh, was really under the aegis of the UN Security Council resolution. And we came in that the Roman law four, as it was called, was met in. Now, there could have been more than four or five schools in the country that taught the matter. So that is a very elitist system. I mean, it produced extraordinary behavior of people. There's no question about that. But the pool that you were able to draw from was uh, unacceptably and grotesquely narrow. So uh, now when I was vice chancellor, I presided over some of those dramatic changes that took place in, in my time. My batch, there were 17 students. But when I became Dean of Faculty of Law and subsequently Vice Chancellor, the number increased from 17 to something like 200. So there were real challenges about the quality of tutorials, things of that kind. But you want to meet those challenges. You, you can't, uh, in a spirit of complacency, go on with a system, uh, however excellent it may be. 